use fresh. The fresher the ingredients, the better the outcome of the product. I would agree with that. So, a little bit of fresh lime on here. Then we'll hit it with some. Uh, and you put salt and pepper on it first? Yes. Okay. Yes. A little bit of cilantro. And a little bit of cilantro. Those are like my two favorite ingredients, oh, too. Lime and you cilantro. You can't go wrong. I was hooked from the smell, and now she's even more. Okay. So we got a nice hot pan here. We're just going to do just a touch of olive oil. Now, if you're shopping for grouper in the store, in the yes. grocery store, any yes. tips to finding a good grouper or what um, should you ask for well, or look for? It depends. I mean, if you're going to buy a whole filet, um, the first thing is smell. Obviously, okay. it needs to have a fresh, watery smell to it. Um, if you're buying whole grouper, you want to look at the eyes or the gills. Um, if the gills are red, um, blood in the gills, uh, not, they have to have clear eyes, not cloudy eyes. That, okay. that means you've got the freshest okay. product possible. Huh. So we're basically going to put this in here. You want to get a nice, real hard sear on it. Uh, the key is to get a nice, dark brown caramelization so color on it. Does that mean it. get it real hot? So what exactly. Is that? How do you do that? Okay. Uh, the term saute actually means to jump. So it's a French term to jump. So when you put it in the pan, it should actually jump. It's the sizzle. So if you don't hear that sizzle when you put it in the pan, your pan's not We've hot We've had a lot of chefs on this show. You were the first to yes. tell us that. Really? That's pretty cool. Well, I got to say, this is so educational. <laughs> I feel like you are just giving tip after tip after tip. Okay, so then from there, we're actually going to do uh, a kohlrabi slaw. A kohlrabi Brussels sprout. And I love this. You're you're not talking about any soggy slaw. No. <laughs> you want a no. nice crispy slaw. Exactly. And that's the thing. When you use a standard purple or yellow cabbage, um, even if you make it right out of the gate fresh, it's still going to tend just the integrity of the cabbage is mostly mm -hmm. water weight. It's about 90% water. So I like to use kohlrabi. Um, this is actually, it's a member of the cabbage family, but it's closer to um, a rutabaga, a turnip. Can you find these at the store? Oh, absolutely. You, okay. you, you can buy these at Publix. People just probably didn't know what it was. Or you, like us, you thought it was an onion. <laughs> that's it. So um, basically, I take this and I shred it on the mandolin. Um, another key ingredient to this one is actually the watermelon radish. Um, it's not like your typical radish. It's got a beautiful pink color to okay, it. Okay, wow. Um, it's not as spicy. Now, we've already got the ghost chili cheese, which is going to add some heat okay. to the dish. The arugula is real peppery. So I've layered in a lot of different flavor profiles. Um, you know, you got the lime juice, the cilantro. Once we hit it with the uh, cumin crema, it's got some lime in there. It'll tone down all of the heat. Um, the ghost chili cheese itself is very spicy by itself. But once you actually have mm -hmm. the tortilla, the slaw... Okay. The relish, everything, it, it mellows it out. Those are group Do I need to worry? Here. I'm like uh, right no. here beside it. I didn't know if I needed to be doing something that I wasn't we, doing here. We need to, uh, once again, you want to get it nice and dark. So we're actually going to let it go just a little bit longer, and we're going to prepare our slaw. So okay. I've already done this. I basically have the grouper, or not the grouper, the uh, kohlrabi. It's got a little bit of fresh Brussels sprout. Um, once again, I've it'll hold up. Of, I love Brussels sprouts, yeah. but so, I've never heard of putting them in slaw. Yeah, so if you have a mandolin or, you know, if not, you can do them by hand. Um, but basically, I would just take this. Basically, do your, your slaw, and it's the same. This one has the blades on it to where you can get more of this application. Okay. And that's how I do the watermelon radish, I'm thinking the like a shredder, itself. like a cheese shredder, could you? Um, is that going to? That would yeah. work, but you want longer strips, and the okay. cheese shredder won't really do that. Okay. So, but you could also hand chop it. It's, okay. it's all the same. Uh, so I'm going to flip this. We'll make a little bit of the. Uh, I was so worried color. I was going to have to flip there. Yeah. Did you see that panic that I was like, oh, I hope he's going to do this for me? That's that's the color we're <laughs> okay. looking for. Okay. So okay. we're going to take a little bit of the uh, the pre-made that I've got. I also did add a little bit of a uh, some carrot, a little bit of uh, red cabbage, just to give it some color. There's mm -hmm. some fresh kale in it. You can also use the leaves itself. So I chopped up some of the leaves, folded those in there. I'm thinking this um, is a pretty healthy coleslaw. Yes, um, but you put, it does, you're adding some. Yes, <laughs> you add the so, good stuff. Yeah. So right. we, we do about equal e equal parts of sour cream we have and a mayonnaise. We a minute left. Just wanted to give you okay. a time. So a little bit of chipotle, oh. some cilantro, a little bit more fresh lime. And the best part about this chef, he's not being stingy. You're going to share this, re this uh, recipe, Absolutely. right? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so you can find this on our... So we'll mix that up. And then basically right. we will put that in the middle here. Once it's all tossed. And then we will assemble the grouper itself. We got a couple right. tortillas. You don't put the tortillas. I was going to say, I'm very confused. First. Yeah. Um, so basically, we're just going to warm these up. I don't know if you the can power see of this. TV. But uh, I was going to say, the slaw was in there. Oh. So we already have a fully prepared one here, ready to Chef go. comes prepared. We Man. like it. Absolutely. So you warm your tortillas. Okay. 
Okay, now, we're out of time. Well, we'll is, this the, is this first. the finished one here? As yeah, you kind of played it up. Let me top it here. A little All bit of the right. frost crema. And again, Rum Runner is a place to celebrate Grouper Week, which is going on right now. Thank you so much for oh, coming. Oh, my pleasure. Today. Thank Chef, you for having have me. You back. All right, Good. I'm ready. I'm going to see what else is up your sleeve. All right, Absolutely. thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, coming up next, time for our Realty Rant. We're going to find out what you should do if you receive multiple offers when selling your home. Is it a good thing, bad thing? I don't know. We'll find out. It is a situation we'd probably all like to be in, receiving multiple offers on your home. So how do you handle that situation? Well, Vince Arcuri and Victoria McGuire are here to tell us from two different perspectives. I love this. My first thought when I hear this is, wait, wait a minute, I thought a couple weeks ago we shouldn't be getting multiple offers on a home. Maybe it wasn't priced right. Well, you see, low. you absolutely see when you get these multiple offer situations that are happening, it's very know, common it in very the market. Uh, you know, with us, we like to price them really retail. If somebody hires us to sell their home, you know, it's a, we're trying to get them the most money that they can. A lot of times, a strategy of a lot of real estate agents is to price it below market and create a somewhat of a bidding war. And one of the biggest complaints we stressful. see, oh, it is very, but <laughs> one of the things we, 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 you hear real estate agents complaining about is, oh gosh, you know, there's 20 offers or the agent, the dreaded words that the agent hears highest and best by Friday or by Saturday. And uh, then we know that the, the buyers, but there's ways that you could actually position yourself in a multiple offer situation. It's not always price that'll help you get the home. And is it my understanding that realtors are gonna know right off the bat? I feel like when I've looked, you know, in years past, they go, okay, we need to put in the best offer because there are going to be, it's gonna be a lot of competition. Right. That's something you really, I would imagine, need to go in. Yeah, yeah, if you're working with a competent, experienced agent that knows the market, they're gonna know when you need to go in at that list price or when yeah. it's more advisable to go in lower. All right, so go ahead. What should we know as far as multiple listing prices from your perspective? From a buyer's perspective, if you are looking to win that property, if you found the perfect home and oh no, it's multiple offers, what are we gonna do? Well, there's a lot of strategies that you can employ at that time. You can of course put down a larger deposit that shows you're more serious and you're more qualified okay. and financially able. Of course, you wanna be pre-approved beforehand with a reputable bank, not some fly-by-night company okay. it needs to be a, a big name that everyone feels comfortable with and have that pre-approval letter ready to send along with your offer okay and then you want to be flexible you've got to be flexible with that closing date even let the seller pick the closing date because the seller may not know where they're moving yet they may need a little more time or they may want to move quickly and okay. then if you can close quickly you might be the one that wins just because of that I like it. I like it. All right. And then now let's flip the side. What say, what say you, Vince? Well, you know, on the, uh, well, just to follow up mm -hmm. on Victoria, one of the things I'd also like to do is write letters to the, if it's a family with, uh, they're moving here for the schools or what have you. A lot of times when a lot of offers are close in price, maybe have, write a personal letter from buyer to seller on why they love the house why they love the area and why they need that house. Maybe create a little emotional it connection. It pulls on the yeah. heartstrings. Okay. Okay. Put a All name right. with a face. I've even had uh, buyers that I've advised them to take a cute little family photo with their kids and everything and include it so that the oh, seller Oh, I yeah, like yeah, it. I like it. All right. It. Okay. And from a seller perspective, uh, one of the things I was at a function last week with Andrew Duncan, okay. you know, the Duncan yeah. duo, probably arguably, you know, one of the uh -huh. finest real estate agents in the country. And uh, who's going to be a guest on the morning blend so coming up here? here. Yes. So just a little teaser okay. for Andrew. Shout out to the Duncan <laughs> duo. Uh, and Andrew, one of the things I asked them, I said, you know, you always, I noticed your listings, you always have this three day, uh, three days to respond. And it's a really smart move because it allows. That's not typical? It's not typical because we typically, you get an offer. Hey, it's a full price offer. Agents seem to want to jump to the seller. Hey, I got a full price offer where their strategy is, hey, you're gonna wait three days and we're gonna allow these offers to accumulate. And what that does is it allows you to uh, really study the offers. A cash is always king, of course. Uh, cash is always gonna win out. But having the time for that, for multiple people to see the property, mm -hmm. to make the multiple offers, 
in a rapid market like we're in, you know, don't jump and just accept you put your home on the market and the next so day you, you like get So you like this three-day rule I too? like the three-day rule. It's a very good, we learn from, from mm -hmm. each other in our yeah. industry and that I like that three-day rule. It seemed to work for people. It does, and it gives you the chance to say this person's cash, this person's financing, who's the bank through. And a lot of times the highest offer is not the best offer. I, I mean, know. you really- Because it doesn't have that family picture in it maybe. Well, you may, <laughs> for a kidding. couple of hundred dollars, you may want to sell it to that yeah. family or you may, for whatever reason, and then all also, if the home doesn't appraise out, yep. you have to be able to say, okay. hey, here's my, I'll pay the difference. That's going to be All a winner right. for you. All right, good to know. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys uh, next week, seeing where you're going to take us. And uh, as always, if you want to see their other um, talking, talking segments that we've done before, Absolutely. RealtyRant.com, there's the number to call today. Varicose veins associated with leg discomfort are a true medical problem for many Tampa Bay residents, but there's good news. You no longer have to live with the discomfort of varicose veins. Here today to tell us how United Vein Centers may be able to help you is Dr. Jamal Wozni, who is a medical doctor board certified in the treatment of vein disease. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. We've been already chatting in the commercial break, and I love how you're going to break this down for us because I, I think sometimes vein circulation, people don't really understand how important it is, kind of the, the cause and effects of, of when something goes wrong. Correct. Explain what it is that this is a big issue a lot of people people are, are seeing and feeling. It is, it is. About 20% of the population will have vein disease. And what happens is, you have to look at it as there's many roads in your legs that are heading north, taking blood back up. Those roads are veins. Well, um, unfortunately, a few of those roads may go bad. Mm -hmm. And when they do, the majority of your blood is still gonna find its way up, well over 90%. But about 5% or less than 5% will get stuck on these roads. And when it does, you can just imagine this circulation issue leads to a problem. Blood will sit in your legs. And when it does, your legs will start to swell. Okay, is that normally the first sign that you, you see? Usually after a long day, yes. That's probably the first, time, first sign you'll see is your legs will start to swell and feel heavy. Okay. I don't want to just say swelling, but it, heaviness and aching you usually should accompany. You know something's going on down there. Correct, okay. correct. And um, the, the swelling will occur to accommodate this blood. And then that'll stretch the skin and the surrounding tissues, which will lead to aching. And then, of course, because blood is mostly water, mm -hmm. If you pick up a bucket of water, it's very heavy. Your legs start to feel heavy. So the first thing you might want to do is go home, elevate your legs, mm -hmm. and that elevation will actually move that blood out of those bad veins, and they'll look, they'll, they'll feel good. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you can try is maybe elevating your legs at the end of a long day, and if they feel great, you know you've done something to help those bad veins. Is this normally an, an age thing, a hereditary thing? If we know that mom or dad had this issue, do we need to be paying close attention to it as well? It's hereditary, okay. correct. Most patients that we see can name a mother, father, mm -hmm. brother, sister who has the disease also. So we were talking to the good news about this, the treatment has come such a long way and even you know what we may remember from mom, dad, grandma, grandpa talking about it, correct. it's nowhere near what it was Correct. Earlier. Often I hear stories of, well, grandma had this and she had vein stripping in the hospital. And that was very common mm -hmm. once upon a time. But uh, we, we are uh, blessed with these sophisticated medical lasers and we're able to do a lot these days as doctors. Uh, you see the eye doctors are able to do a lot of surgeries via laser and um, we as vein specialists are able to use these lasers now also to seal these bad veins, basically heat them closed. So. Um, it's basically a procedure, mm -hmm. and it used to be vein stripping, correct. All right, procedure, so in and out, kind of in the same day, I mean. Pretty much in and out, uh -huh. correct. Um, if there's two bad vessels per se, then like a, like a dentist, we may see you on two different occasions okay. to, to fix the problem. But uh, yes, when we're treating a bad vein, it's in and out, you come in, we heat it closed, you walk out, and yeah. uh, well, relatively what's the, simple. What's the take home, doctor? What do you want, me, uh, again, to make sure people understand when it comes to this particular issue? Uh, the take home is that if you're suffering mm -hmm. with pain, aching, and swelling in your legs, and you feel like maybe you're just getting older or it's just part of life, mm -hmm. it's not. 
get checked out by a yeah. vein doctor. Uh, let them have a take a look at your legs with an ultrasound. Um, again, you may have this medical problem, and like all medical problems, it is covered by your insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so this isn't something to have to be concerned about financially. It's covered by Medicare and mm -hmm. Blue Cross Blue Shield and all the major carriers. And again, you have locations all over the Bay Area, so it's going to be not a problem at all. To Correct. Find you we, and your team. Uh, United Vein Centers is the largest provider in the Bay Area. We are in multiple cities, yes. Well, thank you so much for being on our show this morning. Again, I love how you, you break it down, make it easy for us to understand. And uh, again, there's our info to call if you have any questions as well. And now, another small bite from the Chew. So I'm going to make one of the greatest sandwiches to hit the grill of all time. It's a taleggio and fennel salami panino oh. with fennel honey. So what I start with is I take a little honey and I put some fennel seeds and some chili flakes in it and I bring it up to heat to infuse the honey. And I do this with a lot of things. You can do it with cardamom, you can do it with pink peppercorns, you can do it with just about any dried spice you have. So then what you get is some really good cheese and really good salami, any kind that you like, but I love a washed rind cheese from Lombardia called Taleggio because it, it has a really good melting point. And because it's a washed rind, you can rinse the rind a little bit and just make it, leave the rind on because it has a delicious flavor. Keep in mind that for good Italian panini, you don't want to put too much of anything on because it's all about the balance between the bread and the condiments and all of the Ooh, things that, that go on. Is a so it's a it's a pungent cheese, it isn't pungent. it? And then what you want to do is you make enough salami yeah. on it to feel really good. And on half of this, I'm just going to have cheese for you, Clinton, because Thanks. you're that kind of guy. You want it kind of medium hot because you want to be able to cook it long enough that the bread will get crisp and delicious but that the cheese and everything will melt to form together and come together as a delightful thing, just like these will. And this is what it ends up looking like. Oh, good. Then to serve it, you take just oh, a little more. bit more of the honey. Oh. And you pass it around to your friends, everybody. The Chew, weekdays and streaming anytime on the ABC app or on demand. Hey. Jeans are a wardrobe staple for starting the new school year and the fall season, but how do you pick the perfect pair for your body type? Well, season style guru Josie is here to chat denim and what works for different shapes and sizes. Joe, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Like I said, I'm so excited to talk with you, especially talk about jeans, which really is the staple of anybody's wardrobe, to be honest with you. But first, let's talk about that, those kids going back. How can parents start? What are some tips? Well, I think, uh, first of all, back to school is around the corner. So if you want to talk back to school, denim is huge. But you know what? This isn't just for the kids. It's for the parents. It's across the board. There are big trends going on with denim for fall. And I'm here to tell you what they are. I mean, can we just start? Because I have to tell you, these ladies I have here look so dynamic. And the skinny Natalie is back in a big, big way. And I love the skinny jean because, first of all, it's so flattering on every single body shape no matter your size and I love the stretch in it it gives you so much comfort and versatility and at the same time it's a jean you can dress up or dress down for every single occasion so Levi's is really actually some of the best skinnies out there the darker wash here that's a 721s and that's got a slightly higher waist which I love especially if you're petite it's going to stretch you out and give you a couple of inches in in the illusion of looking taller and then there's your classic skinnies, which are the 7-11s. And those actually we showed you in the crop. So both jeans come high-waisted or cropped. And I love the crop right now. It's a little bit more forward, but it shows off a shoe. It shows off your ankle. And at the same time, you don't have to worry about hemming your jeans, which I love. Who <laughs> needs to deal with that? <laughs> okay, you know what, Joe? I actually want to break some myths with you here because you actually just addressed two things. Okay. First off, skinny jean. I love that you say it's flattering on everybody because some people, a little intimidated, say, oh, I'm a little self-conscious right now, my, my body. That's the last thing I want to wear. Why is that a myth? Well, first of all, that is a total myth because I think it's really about getting accustomed to something. You're so used to wearing loose, baggy clothes all the time. You put on something that feels a little bit more body hugging and then you feel self-conscious when at the same time I think it's much more flattering. I am going to bet all those ladies out there who think they can't wear skinny jeans, the first time you put it on you walk out the door you're going to get a ton of compliments and you won't be able to take them off. And that's really what it is. It's like getting yourself comfortable with trying new silhouettes and that's why I'm saying the skinny is back. It really is so flattering in that way because it hugs your body in, in a really specific way and it's so comfortable at the same time. 
And you brought up the crop gene. That's something else that people shy away from. I've typically shied away from that because I have shorter legs and kind of a shorter statue person. So that's something I shy away from because I want to long, you make my legs look longer. Is that a myth too? Why can everybody wear crop these days? Oh, I actually think I actually think the, the illusion is the other way. I think if you are more petite, the high waisted will make you look leaner, but also the cropped will too, because it's going to give you that silhouette of like a stretch silhouette. So and also putting a great shoe with it. Like I think here we did it with a heel, which I love. If you're gonna do a crop, just give yourself a little bit of a height. And I think that's always a really flattering way to dress up that jean. So I may have had a baby six and a half months ago, but I did love my maternity jeans. Where are the maternity jeans falling into those those falling into your stylish ways, Joe? <laughs> Well, listen, I, I know ladies have worn maternity <laughs> jeans long after the baby, but but you know what? A good alternative really is a high-waisted stretch. It's got that same quality in there. It's going to have that sort of hugging quality to you, but at the same time, it's going to give you that mobility. You know, I think that's a great way to sort of transition back to everyday jeans. And finally, really, really quick as we're wrapping up, I see you've got a jean coat. Is Are those back in style? Are we seeing more denim right now? Oh, jean coats, you know, jean jackets, head to toe. And you know what, Natalie? We can't forget about the guys because I feel like the guys always get forgotten about. So I'm just going to whip through <laughs> oh, these they do. Quick, but, um, <laughs> they look great, right? So, you know, while they're not wearing a super skinny, it is about the new modern slim and taper. And the darker wash here are the Levi's 502s, which is your traditional jean, but it's got a much more of a tapered leg. And then the lighter wash, which are the classic slim. Those are the 5'11s. And I love them because they're not a super crazy narrow leg, but they are not your baggy dad jeans. And these jeans I have worn all through the work week, into the weekend, and back to work. So versati versatility, comfort, but style at the same time. See, I got to tell you, Joe, I was so excited to talk with you. I just had to steal you from my own and talk about all those women jeans. I apologize. Glad we got the guys in and glad we got to talk with you. Oh, of course. And, you know what, and, you, and now that you know what... Jeans you can get to transition to, Natalie, you can go get them all. They're all start at $55, and you can find them all at JCPenney's or Kohl's online or in store. Sounds great. Thanks again for your time, Joe. Take care, okay? Thank you. You too, Natalie. Good morning. Today, I'm so excited to talk to you about home remodeling. I'm excited to introduce you to our next guest here, uh, owner Rhett Mullins of MHS Remodeling. We're in a beautiful bathroom, just one of the areas that they help kind of recreate here in this home, which you're going to see more of in the next several weeks. Good morning. Glad to have you on the show, Rhett. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So I love what your company does, and I love that I think a lot of people are in this boat where they think, okay, am I ready to move into a new home? Do I want to start new construction? Do I want to pack up everything and move? Or do I want to fall in love with my home all over again? And this is what you help people do day in and day out, don't you, Red? Absolutely. That's what we specialize in here at MHS. So talk a little bit about your company. Again, we're in a bathroom this morning, which is absolutely stunning. But this is just one of the areas. You guys do everything uh, that needs to be done from kitchen, bath. Yes, absolutely. We are a residential and commercial remodeling company that specializes in, in homes and businesses that want to update their space mm -hmm. or, or reconfigure their space. Um, we do a lot of kitchens and a lot of bathrooms. We really enjoy what we do. Yeah, you can tell that. And again, the key is experience. This is what you've been doing uh, for several years now. This is what you know, what you love. Let's talk about bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about trends. You say the bathrooms is probably one of the biggest areas of the home right now that a lot of people are getting redone that you can see. Let's say you are going to be reselling your yeah. home. This is where should be looked at first. Uh, I would agree with that. Um, it's it's one of those areas you can get into and, and spend a little bit less money than mm -hmm. you would with a kitchen. Uh, but there's a lot of things you can do with the bathroom to update it and bring it to, you know, kind of current standards and what's really popular and happening right now in design. All right, so let's talk about that. I would think uh, sinks are a big mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Men want their space, women want their space, right, Dual? Absolutely. So uh, a lot of people, when they've got the space available, they, mm -hmm. they really want to go to two sinks. So he's got his and she's got hers, and then you've got a little space in between to put all your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that is actually a, a really popular thing that we're seeing right now. Yeah. Let's talk about space. I love this right here. where you, It looks like you've kind of created some storage space, which I think is so, you know, it's a necessity in bathrooms. Right. Towers are huge. Um, that is a, a really a big selling feature mm -hmm. in bathrooms now. When you can put a tower on there, it's uh, 
especially you know you, we've got a bathroom here that's a little tighter mm -hmm. um, and the storage storage area is not as, as uh, heavy as you know mm -hmm. some bathrooms so putting a tower up there allows you to put your towels and hair dryers and that kind of stuff in there and and keep it out of the way and keep your countertop space clean yeah. and free of debris. How do you help people? You know, I would think maybe you would assume, okay, here's the space that I have for my bathroom. There can only be so much that can be done with it. How do you help home, homeowners kind of figure out how you can maybe change up that space? How do you help them decide what to do? Well, what we do is when we come out to your home, uh, our, one of our first things we ask you is, is what are you envisioning for your space? I mean, mm -hmm. what are your needs? And we take rough measurements of the whole area uh, and even outside, and if we can move some walls or um, mm -hmm. um, move some plumbing to, to, to recreate uh, a little more room for people, we, we love to do that. Mm -hmm. Again, you can tell that passion, uh, that experience is what you're going to find with him and his team. If someone is uh, wanting to kind of, again, relook at their bathroom, what would you have them do? What's their first step as we, we kind of wrap up here, Rhett? Um, I would say do a little homework mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, a lot of people go to, to websites and get some ideas, but find, uh, find some things that you like and that you're thinking about putting in your bathroom and, and give us a call and have mm -hmm. us come out and we do free consultations okay. uh, and we'll work on you with designing it from scratch or, or some customers come to us and they know exactly what we, what they want mm -hmm. and we're, we're more than happy to do those jobs too. And the news gets even better because if you call today, mention that you saw the segment right here on the Morning Blend, you're actually offering a, a great deal if someone is looking to re totally redo yeah. their bathroom, correct? Yeah, we're offering $1,000 off any uh, master bathroom model that, that goes mm -hmm. on. Um, and it's a, it's a great promotion that we're offering this month. Yeah. yeah. Rhett, thank you so much for letting us come into this beautiful home. And again, in the coming weeks, we're going to show you other areas in the home and talk about home trends and uh, what people are looking for. Awesome. So we look forward to doing that again we with you soon, Rhett. Well. All right. For more info, again, about their great company, just head to our website,